Well, in today's edition of Deja Vu All Over Again, which is very common in all political parties, the Minnesota Senate has made voter photo ID a priority for the 2020 session. Now, you might recall the voters said no thanks to that when it was on the ballot in 2012, but Senate Republican leaders say that happened because voters didn't fully understand the issue, so they're going to bring it back. Our question was, well, is this going to be any different or just same idea, new year? John Croman tries to answer that question. Most of the state capital pundits did not see this on the radar for 2020. So we are going to push hard this year to say, if you're voting, you have to have an ID to vote. Senate Majority Leader Paul Gazelka took to Facebook to say, voter photo ID will be a high priority for Republicans this session. A few years ago, we tried to do that. I don't think it was clear in people's mind what actually we were trying to do, but we simply want to say you have to show your ID to vote. The biggest thing people say is that you mean we don't already have photo ID? The year was 2012. Republicans set up a voter ID test site Ta to show how simple it would be to swipe your license at the polls. That's why I'm supporting the effort. Veterans appeared in TV ads in favor and against the idea, and ultimately Minnesotans said no. They voted down a constitutional amendment that would have made voter photo ID the law. My initial reaction, to be quite honest with you, is I was sitting in Fort Lauderdale, literally when I saw it, was, huh? Anastasia Belladonna Carrera heads Common Cause in Minnesota. The sacred right to vote is the sacred right to vote, and that matters whether it's a Republican vote, a Democratic vote, a Libertarian vote, a Green Party member vote, a marijuana vote. I mean, it doesn't matter who that person is voting for or which party they identify with. What matters is that you have everyday citizens able to elect the person that they have a right to elect. After Wisconsin enacted photo ID, the UW-Madison did a study that estimated at least 16,000 people who were otherwise eligible to vote in the state's two biggest counties stayed away on Election Day because they lacked current ID. The study showed those most affected were low-income and black voters. I might have had a stroke between the last time that I had my driver's license and could get myself to the DMV and renew it, and now. Right. Opponents of voter ID also worry about older voters and others who don't drive or fly anymore who used IDs when they registered but might have trouble updating them. When you're looking at our elderly population, when you're looking at our greater Minnesota population, when you're looking at our low income population, right? Many of us are able to spend five, six, seven dollars a day on a Starbucks cup of coffee. That is a barrier to many within these groups that I've just mentioned, right? That is very real. Republican Senator Scott Newman of Hutchinson will carry this bill, but he's not pitching it as a constitutional amendment this time. It's just a straight up change in state election laws. The House is controlled by the DFL. They're dead set against it, especially in the absence of any actual proof of voter fraud or especially ID fraud at the polls. Mm -hmm. So the question becomes, what is the end game here for Republicans? Are they looking for something to trade for something else they want or something the DFL wants? What do you think? It's hard to tell. Is it a political, yeah, yeah like and, you're going to give me something because I have this kind right, of thing? Right, and it's also a great election year issue for Republicans okay. to kind of create this or to kind of go with the narrative that there are people who are voting who aren't eligible to vote and are going to then cancel your vote. Okay, and then second quick question, because you met, it was a constitutional amendment that we voted on the last time around. Mm -hmm. This is, as you said, a, a change in state election law. Is one easier, was the constitutional amendment more difficult to pass? Would this be easier to get through? Um, the amendment was easier in some ways uh, because the governor doesn't get to veto it. Okay. It goes right over the governor's head straight to the voters. Okay. But then it becomes harder to pass depending on how much opposition there is when it comes to the election. So. Politics, it makes for yeah. perfect sense all the time. Thank <laughs> exactly. you so much, John.